religion or are we looking for God? Today's gospel reading, Jesus encounters ten lepers. If you know anything about the ancient world, leprosy was a disease that people were terrified of. Somebody came down with leprosy, they were pushed to the margins of society, pushed out into leper colonies because they didn't want them to get anybody else sick. It was a terrible, lonely, isolated existence. So Jesus encounters this group of ten people with no other support but their little group, all of them sick, all of them pushed to the margins of society. And they go to Jesus, and they ask him for healing. And he says something weird. He doesn't say, boom, you're done, you're healed, go home. He says, go to the priests. Because if we go back to the Old Testament, the book of Le Leviticus, in chapter 14, there's actually a whole process for people who suffered from leprosy to be pronounced clean. You'd have to go to the temple, You'd have to bathe, you'd have to perform a bunch of sacrifices, it's an eight-day process, and then after eight days, the priest would mark you clean, and you'd be able to go back to your lives. So this is what Jesus was saying, and this is what these people do. They're far away from Jerusalem, they're up in Galilee, actually, at this point in, in, in the Gospel according to Luke. So they walk for many days to Jerusalem, they sit in the temple for eight days, they wash, they do the sacrifices, they do everything they need to do, and they're all marked clean at the end of it. And they all get to go back to their lives as they lived them before they got sick. Except one person. One person who wasn't even Jewish, a Samaritan. This Samaritan realizes something in the midst of all of this. And he undertakes the trouble of going back on another long journey. He marches by himself for many, many long days. He goes back to where he first saw Jesus. This is a world before cell phones, right? So he couldn't just text Jesus and say, where are you at? He's got to find him. He finally finds him. He falls down on his feet, and he offers glory. Because he realized something that the other nine didn't. He realized that Jesus wasn't simply a prophet. Jesus wasn't simply this guy who told them to go do this thing that you read, read about in a book. Jesus was the very God that they were sacrificing to in the temple. Right? Jesus was the one that all of this was pointing to. The God that they encounter in the temple, the God to whom they went and they offered all of those sacrifices that were prescribed in the Old Testament, that was the very person that he encountered randomly on the road. And he realizes this, and he goes back and he falls down on his feet. And even though he's not a Jew, even though he doesn't follow the Old Testament, even though he wasn't sort of part of this community, he's the one who realizes, I've encountered God in this moment. And he falls down at his feet and he proclaims glory to God. And it's interesting, that very little bit at the very end, because it says, you know, Jesus tells us, where are the other nine? Because there are other nine who were healed as well, but they're not here. Your faith has made you well, is the way we sometimes translate that into English, which is not a very good translation. There's frequently issues with translations, that's fine. The word that Jesus is actually using there is the word for save. Your faith has saved you. Because all ten of them got healed. All ten of them went and they jumped through the hoops and they bathed and they did their sacrifices and they got to go back home to their businesses and communities, but only one actually encountered God in that moment. Only one of them actually like looked into the face of the crucified and living God. Only one of them was saved. Only one of them was transformed. Like his life from that moment was not going back. Right? Those other nine, they got healed, they were able to go back to their homes, back to their businesses, whatever it was. But his life was never the same from that moment. And that, I think, is one of the challenging and scary things about these encounters with the Lord. Because the other nine, what they did, it's not that they weren't ungrateful. They jumped through the hoops that religion sometimes offers us. They went to the temple. They did what they needed to do, getting bathed, offering sacrifices, etc. And that could be the temptation for a lot of us, right? To reduce all of this to a system of things that we need to do, to religion, right? At a certain time on Sunday morning, our alarm go goes off. We sit, pop a dollar into the tray, and we light a candle. Maybe we receive communion, get some bread, we go home. Nothing's really different, right? The home and the life that we leave on Sunday morning when we come to church is exactly the same thing that we return to, just as all of those nine. They go back after being healed, and they go back to their old way of life. But encounter with God is different, right? Encounter with God is what happened to St. Paul, for instance who was persecuting the church, encounters God on the road to Damascus, 
decides to actually become a member of the church, and he sacrifices his life for Jesus. Or St. Anthony, who we read about today, who we celebrate today. St. Anthony, who encounters the Lord, decides, I'm going to give away everything that I have and dedicate myself to God. That's the danger, the risk, sometimes, of encountering God. Because when we actually do encounter Him, we're never the same. It's not like we get to go back to our old lives. Because that's a challenge for us, I think, as Christians, right? Some of us in the neighborhood might go to a church on Sunday morning. Others might sleep in. Others might go to a different sort of whatever it is. But how much do we really stand out? When people see see us, do they see the love of God in us? Have we been transformed by the love of God? When they see us, do they see radical love? Do they see radical mercy? Do they see radical forgiveness? Do they see radical generosity? Or is it just people who are jumping through certain hoops? And once we're done jumping through those hoops, we go home and it's like nothing changed. And it's easy. I get it. It's totally easy. It's easy to be like those nine. To go through that process, even that eight-day process of doing what needs to be done, and then you go back to what was. It's scary to be like that one. It's scary to open up your heart to God. It's scary to have him tell you that actually what you were doing before, put that aside. Maybe now's the time to give a little bit more deeply. Maybe now's the time to forgive that family member or friend that you held a grudge against for many, many years. Maybe it's that t- that's that time not to, sa- to save up for a new car, but to do something philanthropic in your community. That's what happens when we encounter the Lord. And I think the challenge for us today is to resist the comfort of the nine who did their religious duty and went back home exactly who they always were, and to think, what does it take in our lives to be like the one who looks God face to face and is never the same again? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Son.